just missed. They've actually stepped over and probably step right on the edge of the jaw on the top side. And um, what did I have on that? I think I had one of the magna gland again. Good, I'll just leave it as it is. Down into the creek crossing. Are you expecting something? Don't get greedy, you pair. Two dogs hanging on the front for the day isn't too bad. They're urging me on to greater things, you spare. Come on, Dad, where's another one? All right, another simple set. A little bit of fat under the log on a drag. Hopefully the cattle won't wreck it. Hopefully they'll just walk past and leave that one alone tonight. It's a good little travel track. Comes in here, cuts this corner around the side of the hill, and it's the sort of place I reckon if a dog's coming from that way to come down to the dam behind us, they'd probably use that track there. Mossy and Brandon were just going along the side of the road and they pulled up really quickly from full trot, came back and they both looked in the side of the road here for some reason, right in the side, and they sniffed and sniffed, and then Brandon cocked his leg on the side of this just side of the road. So I've set a, a trap straight in there, just screwed it down, straight in the dust, and put a little bit more of um, bungee pea, actually. had some pea some, of bungee that was, he must have been busting, and <laughs> ended up with this big mud puddle. So I scraped up with my pick and put it in a bag, and I put a dollop of that right here. Sounds a bit gross. We'll see. Hey, we'll see. What do you reckon? Yeah? We shall see. Yeah. Uh. Down to the creek. Get in under the low, the low hanging tree. Maybe tomorrow. You would have got him, wouldn't you, Mossy Moon? You would have got him. You would have bit their throats out, wouldn't you? Yep. It's getting late, so I think we'll just. Um, Finish off, go through the past the last trap up here, which is the, the trap scratcher set. And call it quits for the day. I might even head into town and try and get a few groceries. So. Let's see what's in the last set. Sit. Cattle have been over that one, but they haven't set it off. And that dog. No, it's been a cat, I think. Oh, no. The trap's there. It's cattle. That looks like dog. I think there's been a bandicoot or something small. Birds or something have dug that out. I'll put a camera here and let's see what goes on. Okay, we put the Reconyx up on a tree. Got an old kangaroo carcass here with a blind trap. And we've got these two over here, a blind. And then one on a stepping stick with a little bit of urine on it there. Again, we might be chasing a ghost here. The dog just hanging on the front of the vehicle. We caught him, what, 800 metres from here, further up the gully. So it's quite possible that he was here causing a bit of mischief and then he went over there and made a mistake. Time will tell.
catch two dogs in a program, I'd be. There wouldn't be any dogs left. Except you. Okay, we'll just see. This is our second set. We might have this pack under control. We'll see. No, this looks very silent. Nothing's been back. crossing as the rain comes down. chance that those traps will last a little bit longer. Just come over onto the boundary of property number four. This is one of my favourite properties in Queensland to trap on. It's, it is beautiful. It's hundreds of thousands of acres. Goes back into big mountain country on the far side, rough country. On this side there's still wild horses, there's still brumbies kicking up there, wild pigs everything so here's my boundary fence and straight away if you look at it you can see that this has been stocked over here this is you know there's been quite a few cattle in there this side there's no cattle there hasn't been any cattle in here for a long time and you can see that the stylo here the towns will loosen uh it's it's high it's this high everywhere beautiful feed uh, black spear grass is out in, in head everywhere. I'll show you some of that in a minute if people haven't seen it. The black spear grass, it's a beautiful grass, but it's a real curse once it goes into seed. It gets in everywhere. This is the stuff that basically you know, wipe the sheep out in a lot of areas because it burrows into your skin. There's, um, yeah, kangaroo grass, like this stuff here. Beautiful, beautiful native grass feed. And kangaroos everywhere. I would have seen probably 100 kangaroos as I've come through here. So plenty of food. Straight away, if I look at it, if I'm trying to catch a dog, plenty of food. How do I get that dog? It's probably not causing a trouble at the moment. If he's out here killing kangaroos and living in this, he's probably not causing a trouble at all. As soon as it gets dry times and there's cows in here with calves and whatever, then he's going to be down here looking for a free lunch. And then he starts causing troubles. So <clears throat> object is just to take the top of them off. If we can pull the numbers down, the, the dog numbers down through this country, well, then there's plenty of food to go around and they're not as tempted to cause a problem. So I've tried to look for some tracks here. Not much. Uh, I've got a drag behind the vehicle, so I'm putting a scent along the road. Uh, I might just put one here. I might just put a, just a, a blind trap here. Dig it down into one of these roots of, on the ground here, tree roots, and just put it right out in the open and probably put something like a scat or a, maybe just magna gland on a leaf of a little bush, high enough that the scent's going to come across to them. And, uh, yeah, just try and get a dog that's coming down this road, heading into where this, this uh, mob of wagyu cattle, wagyu cows and calves, Cows just calving right here next to us. So that, that's the plan. Let's have a look at the spear grass. The spears all come together and they blow together in the breeze. They turn into this big mass. 
of um, seed heads. And each one's got a little spear on the end. If you get one of these seeds and you get the tail, you get the tail and you run it through your mouth and you wet it, put it on the palm of your hand. And people say to me, Clark, why do you wear blue jeans? Why don't you wear sort of some of these designer, you know, hunting uh, apparel brands that you see out there? And there's a lot of fantastic hunting gear out there. Well, I've seen people go and buy one of these brand name uh, sets of hunting trousers or shirts for that matter. And they go out for one day in this black spear grass. And I've seen them come home and throw their brand new trousers in the bin, you know, $200 trousers in the bin. Or I've seen one bloke throw his on the fire and burn them because they're literally useless. Um, the, the, that, that amount of seeds that get in them and into your skin that you can never get them out, they're the most irritating thing you've ever had. Old blue jeans, um, yeah, they will let a couple through occasionally, but 99% of them just um, brush off. So that's why I wear blue jeans. Just set a fishing trap there in this little gully. Bit of pig sign, so I'm not really hopeful, but uh, we'll try. Just put one here as a floater. All right, I've come into this nice little sandy creek bed. Now this is a very easy place to trap. You know, you get a, a set in very quick and uh, I find that they, a dog has a lot of trouble picking where you have uh, set a trap in sand. Where, where you've done it in hard dirt, you've got a lot more disturbance to the soil, if that makes sense. Um, here you can get one in very quick, just bury it in its sand. Uh, they're expecting loose ground, so when they step on it, I don't think they can feel if there's any anything underneath it. Uh, so it usually works well if a dog's coming through here. I think I'll put two traps, one over this side here, one over there, use magnet gland and probably a bitch urine up high. And um, yeah, just set it up as part of the, the uh, trap line here on property number four. Dang grasshoppers, they're getting pretty thick. Finally, I've driven around most of the morning and haven't seen a track. And finally, here. Righto, so we'll set one or two, might even set two traps here. And, um, yeah, that's good fresh sign. At least one dog, so we'll plan for two. One in at the base of that tree, and one on a drag here. There's a scat right in the middle of the road. There was a scat, so I've put another one beside it. On a drag, <coughs> very simple sets. And this is what you get driving through this stuff. Look at this. Just masses of this horrible spike and see. Well, we've come round the opposite way this afternoon. I'm doing an anti-clockwise circle. Just for the heck of it. Nothing. Oftentimes this happens during a trap line that you sort of get the initial hit and things will go quiet and then they'll usually fire back up again, you'll get another run and then that's it. Okay, it's four o'clock and come along here. I saw a 
track. Very faint track, but there's been a dog along this line here on this hard stuff. Could be this big dog that we saw right beside us here yesterday and didn't get a shot at it. Once I've set up over here another two traps, uh, but I'll put one here and I pulled up to have a look at this, this fallen log. And here's an old scat beside as well. So I'll just put a bit of magma gland on the scat and put a trap in at the base of it. And it'll just add to this whole set pattern that we're doing. You never know, it might fire, might not, but it'll do its job. Good morning. Well, I'm on a mission. I managed to get a chance to look at my uh, trail camera photos and videos last night. And uh, it shows I've got three dogs coming in one area on property three and another dog coming in another area. Now they're all very trap shy. When you see them in the clips, you see um, one dog come up here and it, it knows there's a trap there. It, well, not just one trap, it's missed actually the two on the other side. And uh, it's concentrated on the, uh, on the trap on the other side of the road and where I've got a bit of a carcass there. Anyway, uh, it does everything to stay away from that trap area. And then later on, two other dogs come in. So the first one sort of got a black muzzle and the second two are all look like straight yellow dogs and uh, they don't even want to come anywhere near the, uh, the main sort of spot. Uh, even go down there one stage and lie down on the road. Interesting to just watch through these clips because it gives you a bit of an idea into the psyche of these dogs. Um, and they're going to be there. I've got to somehow bring them in and tice them in. And maybe we have last night. Maybe I'll get back there and we've already got one or two of these dogs there last night. Um, but yeah, interesting. I've got some ideas that I'm going to try. Uh, a few more blind traps, a few more scents. And uh, I think I'll get those, uh, I think I'll get them. On the other side, not far away, only a kilometre away, we've got a dog coming in there that's got a white tip on its tail. And uh, it's going straight past, like straight past that um, squeaker, not even batting an eye at the squeaker. So what I'm going to do is bring the squeaker out, more visible, uh, put it in an amp amplifier, put it in a bottle, and see if I can get it to uh, to respond to that better. So yeah, we've got a mission today. We've got four dogs there. I've got another one here I'm gonna set up for now, uh, over here. This one's been bugging me for the last week. It's, it comes in, it's dodged the trap a couple of times. It won't commit. So I'm gonna fence off an area and put a few more traps in. Um, yeah, so we've got one, two, I reckon I've got eight or ten dogs still on this line, but they're all tough. So the challenge is on for this next week. Now let's think about this. No more tracks. I've only got one trap there. All right, and this dog has actually come right in under here because it bitches your eye on this on this overhanging branch. Cattle coming right under here. I've actually had dog dog prints. Can't see any there now. My tracks. But I've had dog prints right along that track where the cattle go. Right. What I reckon I'll do is I'll come out here beside the vehicle. And I'll probably put a couple of um, steel posts in here. And a third one maybe over there. I'll tie off that little tree here and make it like a little triangle. And just keep those cattle from going in that, that area. And I'll probably set three, two or three blind traps in there. Or maybe not even a blind. I might put one with, say, magna, magna gland and another couple of blind and uh, we'll lace it up. We'll make this a little bit interesting. 
Okay, I'm going to set one straight off the uh, off the branch here as a drag in the dust there, and I'll put that um, urine rag down close, and I'll put a bit of magna gland on it, just up high, so high distance. I want them to come in there, see it as a visual, to walk underneath on that pad if they're used to. So I'll put the other one further over the other side there, same thing on this pad probably tied down to that branch over there. So I'll have one, two, three sets in here. Okay, here's the finished product. The uh, two barb fence around, and I've got two traps blind in the dust, a little bit of magnet gland as a lure, and uh, the cattle can walk around it, and the dog hopefully will go through. not to get a shot at this big yellow dog when I saw him here the other day but you never know I just got a feeling that he comes through past this dam quite often so luck could change I've got some good sets down here why they haven't fired I can only put it down to the fact that this dog is pretty cagey he's seen you know, plenty of his kinfolk with uh, a bit of bling on their feet so uh, it might take a lot of time here okay We're just rolling into property three and now uh, the first gully where we've got the two dogs Remember Brandon, nothing succeeds like success. It's going to be interesting to unravel this, but we've got him in the original trap. This is a trap that's caught three dogs in the one trap. The other ones are still set there, I don't think he's set them off. So, uh, good. Oh, Mossy, you know the drill. Okay. The trap's still in. No, I got this wrong. There's the original trap. I got him in one of the blinds. Full spring Victor, full paw. That could be the dog with the white tip. Yep. That could be white tip dog, big brindle dog. Excellent. Trying to decipher what's going on here. It's quite a few tracks, eh? Quite a few tracks. So this dog has taken out three of the traps that were all set on the one log when he's when he's uh, got caught. So I've got him caught in one I've set um, yesterday, the blind trap. But one more trap over here by the uh, by this little tree, it hasn't been touched. So there could have been other dogs with him, or there could have been other dogs that come past 
after he's been caught. There's other tracks there. Anyway, we've got this one out of the road. Now to work on the other ones. We can see that dog was hawking off the trap up here. He, two traps we've had set at the head of that fallen tree. You can see he's gone past it and hasn't, uh, hasn't come in on the squeaker. I'd say he's come in here, been hesitant, come in a little bit too close and put his foot in the bind. Right, I've set two back here. That's where the dog was. He spent a fair bit of time there this morning. So I've just left the branch pretty much where it was. Took one set there, one set there, and one set over here, using bits of grass and some of the damage that the dogs caused to just deflect them. So it makes a little corridor there. I've made a little corridor there. Put the dog back up there to the truck. As I did, I looked across here and I can see the amount of dog sign that's here, right over on this bank. Whatever else was here was hugging this bank, it was right over on the edge. So I'm going to put another trap right down there on the opposite side of the road and probably just put a little bit of bitches urine on this little lump of uh, dirt here. Just something as they go past. If they're hawking off that side, coming around this side, I want to trap here as well. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, if this is the end of the episode, I don't know where it is until I start editing. But if this is the end of the episode, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate your comments. Uh, if you can like it, share it around. Uh, I'd love to get more of our stuff into the US. Uh, we seem to get quite a good following when some of our clips managed to hit the US. Uh, so yeah, thanks everybody and see you next Tuesday. There doesn't have to be a fortune in this trapping game. There's sunsets like that. Pretty awesome. Good to just be out here. So anyway, end of another day. We'll see what happens tomorrow.